One of the problems that we have to identify is we have allowed our hearts, and I clo I'm closing with this, to be clogged with so many things that don't give room to the word of God. We have allowed our hearts to be full of offense, of resentment, of, of unforgiveness, of bitterness. We have allowed our hearts to be clogged by, with despair, with discouragement, with hopelessness. We have allowed our hearts to be filled with self-pity, feeling sorry for yourself, speaking words of failure. Please pay attention because this is critical. You see, if your heart is full of self-pity, self, you know, feeling sorry for yourself, complaining and murmuring, grumbling, fear and forgiveness, ignorance, it becomes impossible for the word of God to find root in the same heart. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of heart. Proverbs 4, 23. The reason is this. Is that whatever you allow to fill your heart. Shall be the very thing that shall issue out of your life. So if you're full of fear. And failure. And disappointment. And resentment. And unfortunately many people come to the house of God. And they are looking at me today. And I'm shouting all these things. But they are, their mind is so far away because they are thinking about what they did, the rent they haven't paid, the school fees they haven't paid, the condition they left in their home, the issues that are facing them. What they are forgetting is that God has gathered you in Zion. And the reason why God has gathered you in Zion is because this is the place of encountering him. And the things that are out of order in your life, this is the place they get sorted out. I wish I could get some people with faith. I said, this is a place they, got, they, get, they get sorted out. I didn't come to play. I said, I didn't come to play. I came as a prophet to let you know that whatever the devil has said cannot move. Today, it's moving. I said, today, it's moving. Look at me properly. I've been in prayer. I know something is about to shift. I said, I think, I said something is about to shift. But you have to empty your heart out of every fear, every, every disappointment, every anger, feelings of thinking that God has abandoned you. God cannot abandon you. He can never forsake you. You walked here, you are fearful because you left things out of order in your house. May I let you know that the God of heaven has said, though you walk through the valley, of the shadow of death. You shall fear no evil. For my rod and my staff. They shall comfort you. I will prepare a table for you. In the presence of your enemies. And they shall not bite anything. That he shall prepare for you. Your cup shall run over. Surely. Goodness and mercy. So I need some people like the centurion. Who will say, Bishop, just speak the word. I know things are not working, but speak the word. I know the devil has been terrorizing me, but speak the word. I know that I'm sick in my body, but speak the word. I know I haven't paid rent, but speak the word. Do I have some people in the house like that who can say, yeah? yeah. I know what it means to come to church and things are falling apart at home. I've been doing this for 36 years. So I know what it means. Some of you are not that old. I've been around more than some of you. So I know how it is to be in church and you're shouting and you're screaming. And you know how you left things at home. But I've also been around to know that he who began a good work in me can send angels that when I'm in church, they shall be fixing things at home. Didn't we just hear a testimony of David that I'm prophesying and the phone is ringing? Don't you think that God can fix your issues today? Yes. You know, that testimony, can you just say, that shall be my testimony? That, that today before you leave this place, God shall fix it for you. Is there somebody who needs God to fix something for them? 
Come on, lift up your hand and say amen. amen. Like the centurion, what are we going to do? Just speak the word. Somebody say speak the word. Speak the, word. the word of God has the power of God backing it up. Hearing what I'm saying. So the Bible says this, therefore with joy, what shall you do? Come on, talk to me. What shall you do? You shall draw water from where? The wells of? Salvation doesn't mean you've been born again. Salvation means preservation, protection, you know, prosperity, everything that concerns, you know, your well-being. How shall you draw water from the wells of salvation? Through what? Come on, read. Through what? If the devil can steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. I wish I could. Let me say that again. If the devil can't steal your joy, he can't keep your goods. The devil is always after your joy. Why? Because as long as you're full of joy, you will continue to draw from the wells of salvation. That's why the devil wants you to kunja your face, look like somebody that has been ringed on, hit by a matatu, dropped by a border, border crushed by a, a, a tuk-tuk. The devil wants you to look so bad, pararad. You know, your hair is like makonge. What, what God wants you to do is to lift up your voice in the midst of the situation and say, I will rejoice in the Lord my God. I will bless the Lord my God at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I may be feeling like my body is about to give up, but he who began a good work in me, he is faithful to complete it. Today we are going to draw we are going to draw uh, we are going to draw from the wells of salvation we are going to draw with joy from the wells of salvation can i get an amen from somebody can i get some 30 people with some joy to give god a praise in the house of god i refuse to get an attitude i say i refuse to get an attitude can somebody with some joy lift up their hands and give god a praise as i come to the climax I say give God a crazy praise. I say give God a crazy praise. For with joy, I say with joy, I choose to rejoice. Oh, come on, give God. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them with joy. Sit down, let me close. Choose to rejoice. The devil hates joyful Christians. He hates it. He wants you to have a long face. God, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Come into his courts with praise. Today we are going to lift up the kind of a praise that we have never lifted up in JCC. As we leave this house and as you go forth with rejoicing, the, the God with his angels shall be going before you to make every crooked path straight. Can somebody say amen? amen? And I'm not telling you that to charge you up. I'm just telling you that we are going to frame our world and refuse to allow the devil to tell us what we can and we cannot have. Clap your hands and give God a praise.